Welcome to the creation station, to my favorite part of working on uh, a particular group of musical instruments, the strings. It's just where my heart is. You know, I love all instruments, you know, percussion instruments, everything in the band, but strings have my heart like nothing else. And not only strings, but also French horns, flutes, and stuff like that. And now when people come up with these uh, string libraries for synthesizers so that we can create our own string sections, and then hopefully if we have the budget, give those to the real players and let them play, you know, the chart and or sometimes create a hybrid production where both get layered, which I frequently do. You know, I'll have a lot of synths and then real strings on top. That happens very frequently, as it as you can hear on uh, Jason Gould's wonderful CD, Dangerous Man, which was co-produced with Quincy Jones. Um, that's what we did over there. It was an overdub between real and synth foundation. Today, I um, wanted to talk to you about these string libraries that uh, get produced by so many people. And when they do a demonstration video on YouTube, as they frequently do nowadays, they have these dramatic 16th note staccato things like film music, like, you know, the, a chase scene, like a car chase or something like that, or a spaceship scene, like an armada's invading and everything's da 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 And I tell you from experience, that is very easy to get a decent string library that does all these marcato and staccato sounds the elegiac, melodious, lush, and emotional, and uh, um, long notes, these chords, these rich chords, are much harder to produce with string libraries. And in order to discover how far I could push it, I um, looked at uh, Here's to Life, uh, arranged by Johnny Mandel, the performance where Shirley Horn did, delivered this incredible vocal. It's just absolutely stunning. You can find the original on YouTube. Um, if this is a video ends up on YouTube, I'll put the link next to it. But just search Here's to Life, Shirley Horn, and you can hear the original. This is an emulation. It's probably about, if I'm lucky, 50% accurate to what the chart really says, because his orchestration is larger. It has four horns, full string section, harp, piano, electric piano synth. Um, what is there? Uh, flutes, Four flutes from what I remember. Anyways, so I wanted to see how far can we get into this real lush realm. And at the same time, how can we create a three-dimensional room so that it doesn't sound like just like a wall of strings, but a room of strings. So that you can feel the tr three-dimensional experience of a symphony orchestra. Because that is what I love doing. You know, I'd like to just take the idea, take the emotion in the moment and apply it directly into my instruments over here. And so I come up with these sounds. And this actually turned out quite nice. So bear with me. This is extensive. I hope you have time. Get your good headphones and um, listen in. This is how uh, Johnny Mandel starts out the song. Oop. The very humble beginnings. Here's the verse. Isn't that pretty how he just opened it up all of a sudden? So what were the instruments that he was using? First of all, I wanted to show you that the top string line that starts the whole thing is a legato patch by L.A. Scoring Strings. Hear that note? And watch how it ties over. That's called true legato. That's, this particular library has this very beautifully realized. For example, if I play this on my keyboard now, um, sometimes it actually works. Wait. You see two things you were able to observe. First of all, the connection tissue between the two notes. The <clears throat> the other thing is, also if I use the modulation wheel, see how the vibrato intensity gets slightly stronger.
And as I back off, vibrato gets less, and the tone gets darker. You hear more resin on the sound and so forth. So that's the first scene. Um, that's the first ingredient. The second ingredient is what are the sounds that he used in this particular instance. Check it out. First of all, we got a rhodes and a piano on top of each other. The rhodes does nothing but, in my case, the bass notes. Actually, there's a chord there, but very dark, lower, somber register. And then there's a vibraphone. The vibraphone creates that beautiful, shimmery, fast tremolo sound. Uh, on top of that, he's using the string patch, as you can see on the screen recording over here. It's very subtle. Listen. Almost like an Aaron Copeland chord. Just beautiful. That's all the ingredients for that one scene. Let's move on. Let me stop there again. Forgive me for interrupting. This is so pretty, but you notice that the strings only play two chords, but the electric piano plays that flat nine suspended chord in between. And the strings are not doing that. That was very surprising to me to hear that. Here we go. Now that stuff just breaks my heart. I just, when I heard Johnny Mandel do this in that orchestration, I thought, oh, you mean man, you did it to me again. And uh, here's the, um, uh, the uh, string patch, the, my main Sordino ensemble, which is from uh, a Sordino ensemble from LA Scoring Strings, which I'm gonna show to you real quick. I'm just gonna improvise a little bit on it so you can hear the sound. Let's see, I need to actually transpose it up. I call this my L. Schmidt patch. So they're incredibly lush. What they do not have, of course, is the connective tissue between each note. Let me show it to you this gorgeous passage, which I I listened to it as good as I could. I hope it's, you know, it brings the emotion across, but is it one note for note accurate? No, not to the original chart. Right? And top of that, I used to gain the legato, um, the legato effect, or the connective tissue, as I like to call it, between the notes. I'm using four instruments here. Let's listen to them soloed out. See what you can hear. So I have a cello in there and two, um, or actually three patches that play the same thing. These three play the same thing, but one of them is a first chair, which is a closer sound, closer to the microphone, which adds realism. And if I combine them with the strings up above, on top here, the string patch, which creates the padding chordal version uh, of this passage. Here's what it sounds like. And lo and behold, now you have the expressiveness and the fluidity, you know, as far as I can get with synthesized instruments right now. Next passage.
Isn't that beautiful? That little question mark, that musical question mark that he put in there. Let me show you what the ingredients are. Obviously, we know it's a string pad, you know, that's over here. Then I added an upright bass. That's also not on the chart. I think they're using the electric bass very subtly, but I think that most of the bass in the original recording comes from um, the Fender Rhodes or the Synth Rhodes, whatever they used there. It wasn't even the Fender Rhodes. That's my upright bass from Trillion, software called Trillion. Here it is. Really nice, flexible upright bass. Here is my favorite thing. The upper structure of this chord is actually played by flutes. And this is a, a program that cost around 50 bucks called Master Flute, and it's got true legato as well. And then to that, I added the harmony, which I heard on the recording. Notice the how oftentimes he will use fourths. It's really, really interesting. They add a, an, a, a what's the word, and an emotional, there is a, what's the word? You almost kind of, you know, you, it, it's just all goosebump stuff, you know. It, it makes you just, you know, it, it, there's a certain coldness about the sound, but it's embedded in such a warm sound. So it's got this clear upper structure. The fourths are very clear sounding, which thirds obviously don't. Uh, there's also also a third note. Um, here's the passage. Um, what was also in there, I heard a little bit of French horn just for a few notes. Here's the French horn. That sound, by the way, is from French horn and tuba in uh, Silacek Library. Extremely good. Let me show it to you real quick what it looks like. Here it is. That's this. Uh, I have a beautiful legato. And if I pump the volume pedal up, look how expressive and how brassy they can get. And if you could see my left foot, I'm going to do it. So I'm constantly breathing with it. I never leave these things static. I can't create anything reasonably realistic sounding if I don't do that with cellos, violins, flutes. You know, everything is da -de da -de da So I'm, you know, according to that amount of expression, I have to pump the pedal quite a bit. All right, let's move on. Um, the whole passage one more time. Here's that musical question mark done by a vibraphone with a fast vibrato, my favorite movie sound of American movies always. When I lived, still lived in, in Germany, I heard this as a kid. I thought, how cool, what a cool sound. It's just a fast, fast tremolo unit um, on a, a vibraphone. You know, so it's a very, very good sound from a Mach 5 library that I bought a long time ago. Moving through. Notice how little rhythm was needed there. The piano is not pounding through. The only reason why an acoustic piano would ever pound through is in order to sustain the note enough so that there's enough, enough music bed that supports the vocal. You know, this one doesn't need it. You know, moving through. Next. See that fourth upper structure.
a humble emulation of Johnny's genius of work. There again, upper structure, two flutes. At least two. upper structure on the strings. Next verse. And isn't it interesting how how bittersweet this all sounds? You know, the song "Here's to Life" is a celebration of life. Why does he treat it so uh, so introspective? You know, the orchestra gets to soar later on. That this is something I'm going to move forward real quick. But I found it amazing. I'm looking at the chordal structures, how bittersweet and sentimental and uh, melancholic they sounded. So there's a long vocal interlude here. And all things get uh, get better. Here's to life. You know it. Here's to here's to love. Here's to you. Now check this passage out. Watch what the French horn does. passage is just like it just kills me um french horn see how far how far it reached up in like stratospherically high the highest i've ever heard a french horn placed here's the melody that's what it does <laughs> notice the connection this is by the way it's created by setting the, vo the velocity of the notes fairly low. See this one on, in Pro Tools, a light velocity, like on this note, is made uh, is kind of um, displayed with a lighter color and a darker hue on the color means it's a stronger note. So this is fairly high velocity. Let's also look at the velocities. Hang on. See this, these velocities are fairly high. That note is so low, that actually triggers the legato effect. See, if I make this note louder, like here, it's a fast transition. If I bring it back to where it was. See, now you get this beautiful, absolutely natural sounding and emotional, you know. It's the first emotional high. I mean, let's play this again. This is just too pretty. Just stunning. 
You noticed also, by the way, that there's not a single cymbal effect, no timpani, I have nothing, no percussion instruments of any nature in there. And I believe in the score there are none either, from what I remember. I glanced across the first 40 bars. You can find them online, by the way. It's, it's never been published. This masterpiece has never been published. That's why I have to guess, you know, so you'll notice that I'm adding a couple of things in here that are, you know, if you are an experienced scoring orchestrator, you'll, you'll, you'll see that I use some fantasy to make up for things that I couldn't possibly make out of the original recording, uh, which was analog, you know, it's got a lot of distortion and tape saturation on it, so, uh, but be it as it may, here's one of the things that I love doing, which I added in here, is a gliding bass to support the fundament, that, that low uh, girth of this passage. Uh, let me show you real quick why that sounds by itself. This is done with Omnisphere, just a monophonic patch all the way down into the basement. You can probably only hear this with your good headphones. Now, in context, so at first there's nothing. And here it comes. Now we're nearing the end of the song, we're almost done. That's the repeat, the reprise. Oh, that's good, gets better. Here's the live, now watch this. Interesting, right? The texture, that's not just strings. So there's one note of a uh, uh, French horn in here, look. Actually, you know, I'm using a low fanfare uh, uh, in a brass instrument in register and the French horn. A very, very light uh, velocity and very low expression. Um, this this how much expression I have in there. You can see it breathes up. And that's just a static note. I almost never use static notes. If you look across all my work here, there's very little static things happening. But now let's bring in... Aha, there's a little flute here as well. Hang on. But on that particular chord, Sordino, here's the ensemble. There we go. Make it a little smaller. So the here, it's four note chord. Make sure that we didn't forget anything. Pretty, right? And then she sings, and we come to the finale. Here we go. Last time, let's look at the green. You see, the French horn took the lead. You know, yes, the chord, uh, the string chord is there, bedding it. And then there is um, legato violins playing, uh, joining the French horn at some point. Here they are. There's our glissando again. Or portamento, whatever you want to call that. See how they had joined the French horn? Here we go. Sorry. There you go. That's all I got for you today. This was so much fun. It took me about close to two, two and a half days to do this. And this is not by any means finished because, you know, I would certainly like to, I don't know how I can ever find the original score just to compare it to, but this is just for training purposes to see how far can I, can I get in layering the appropriate instruments on top of each other. You know, where does a string, like a four, let's say a four note string chord get uh, a two-note two, two note 
French horn or flute add-on? You know, is there a flute on top? What does the flute do? It's just, uh, Johnny Mandel, to me, just delivered the absolute divinely inspired masterpiece, the gold standard of all arrangements. And uh, I'm just fortunate to be able to to distill enough from it with my ears, you know. But just so you know, strings are what I, my heart is just beats the strongest for. I can't help it. I grew up with Bach and Beethoven. My, my mom was cleaning the house when I was a kid. There was always Bach and Beethoven played, mostly Bach. My mom said that cleanses her soul. And, you know, I kept thinking, you know, maybe if I play it in my house, my house will be less messy. Um, but this is my favorite part. So if you ever need strings, you come to me. Anyways, that was it from the Creation Station. Have a great rest of your day. Take good care. Peace. <laughs>